Well hello there. Just a few words to start this video if you have a second. The presenter is Dr. Eric Johnson. He's a veterinarian with a specialty in fish health. He's been treating fish since 1991. He's authored a book on Amazon.com called, Koi Health and Disease 2. The audio of most YouTube videos is recorded in his car, not a studio. So please pardon the gritty quality of the audio tracks. Sometimes the background is a robot like myself, a PowerPoint presentation, or just Dr. Johnson driving to work. Again, please pardon the not fancy video. In the final analysis, these videos are created to educate. It's hard to entertain with stuff as boring as this, but it's still useful and important information. We appreciate you watching. Please, like and subscribe at the conclusion of the video, so that other people can find this information more easily. Many thanks. Good morning. So I hope the introduction that I put at the beginning of the video excuses a certain amount of low tech in this video. The video today regards uh, jumpers, uh, fish that jump out of the tank and what you should do about it. And um, so let's get started. Uh, fish may jump out of a fish tank for a lot of different reasons. Uh, remember the first fish tank that I ever got in 1973 when I was six years old, um, eight years old. Anyway, uh, the fish, half of them jumped out the first night. My uh, Santa Claus had set up the fish tank, and uh, it didn't have a top. It just had a light strip and a hang-on filter. And uh, over the course of the evening, all the fish had jumped out. Uh, that was my first experience with jumpers. Uh, my brother and I ran around and picked up all the baby, or the uh, dead fish and uh, dying fish and fish that had recently jumped out. And we got to see firsthand that some of the fish um, that are fresh out barely show any symptoms at all. Fish that have been out for a minute uh, show more significant signs and injuries and that sort of thing. And then finally, there's fish that are dried onto the floor. They're like literally stuck on the floor. And for the most part, those are goners. But it brings me to my first point, and that is when fish jump out, I don't think you should ever give up on them because certain, well, okay, never give up on them. You know, I mean, realistically, you have to give up on them sooner or later. But there's hardly a fish that you can peel off the floor that you should immediately write off. There's a combination of factors in that. One, um, sometimes the top surface or the whole fish can be really bad looking because it's flopped around in leaf litter outside or it's flopped around on dust bunnies under your bed <clears throat> and might look really bad. Let's not let that kill the fish because sometimes popping around in dust is actually good for it because it can form a almost a slime scab of dust and hair and stuff. I've seen some fish come through that, just peeling that off almost after it starts to feel better, having just sliding out of a skin made of mucus and fuzz. Um, but you, you never really know. Um, so any fish that jumps out that you think might even be dead, put it back in the water. Um, it's fine to handle them a little bit, but there's three different handling that you should do very gently. Uh, first, try and, if possible, get the gill covers open. Because it has happened before that the gill covers can shut with mucus. On the one hand, at first, that's a lifesaver because it keeps the gills uh, inside at least moist. But once the fish goes back in the tank, if those gills stay shut, water movement over the gill tissue is minimal. So once you get the fish into the water and kind of gently rub off the stuff that comes off easily, try and get the gill covers open, at least one gill cover. That is not the time to put the fish's mouth over an outlet from your filter and blow its stomach out with water pressure. It doesn't really need that. Um, if you were to take such a fish and put it over an air stone, that might not be a bad idea because then water is moving passively over the fish, ostensibly through the gills. But anything you're doing with that fish while you're handling it is stress. 
and that decreases your odds of success with that fish. So if you're picking up what I'm putting down right now, it's get the fish back in the water, wipe off the stuff that you kind of can, at, don't start scraping it with your fingernail, open the gill covers, and then the second thing I need you to do is flex the body just a little bit. Not so much that you tear the dried skin on one side, but just bend the body a little bit. Um, that has a tendency to, to uh, break down a little bit of rigor that may have started. Uh, fish get into rigor mortis really fast because they're a glycogen-rich mus muscle. And uh, moving their body just a little bit one direction, a little bit the other direction, um, is of some use to the fish. It, uh, I guess it limbers them up if they're going to try to do anything uh, with their body to right themselves. Um, and then, um, now this goes beyond the ability of most people. When their fish is a jumper, especially if it's a fish of size and of value, um, one of the things that's a good idea to do is inject uh, a medicine called dexamethasone. And again, this is for fish of size and a fish of value. Uh, fish that are very, very small obviously cannot sustain an injection of dexamethasone. But let me explain what dexamethasone is. Dexamethasone is a steroid very close to cortisol. When a fish is under, or person, or rabbit, uh, anybody, is under a lot of stress, they secrete kind of like adrenaline. It's secreted right alongside adrenaline. They secrete cortisol. It's a stress hormone. and It allows an animal or person to release sugar, make sugar, survive a very stressful event. A uh, rabbit, for example, dumps a massive amount of cortisol when it's being chased by a hawk. It increases speed, helps it deal with stress, helps it secrete and use sugar better. It's just a marvelous thing. Uh, but when a fish jumps the tank and has flopped around on the floor, its cortisol's done. Inflammation in the brain or other parts of the body that have been hit uh, when it got to the floor uh, may also uh, manifest. And so controlling inflammation and dealing str with stress is a good thing with dexamethasone. Now, if the fish has only been out of the tank for... 20 seconds or 30 seconds or, you know, it looks pretty good and you put it back in the water and it swims off, don't give it dexamethasone, okay? Dexamethasone injections would be for a fish that isn't doing very well. Let's look at it, and I think it says this in my book. Let's look at dexamethasone as a last resort injection for fish that you're pretty confident aren't going to make it if you don't ameliorate stress. The dosing on dexamethasone is beyond the scope of this video. Uh, the dexamethasone dosing per inch or per pound is in my book. Uh, it's on my website. I'll probably end up doing a video on using dexamethasone showing injection technique if there's not already one. But uh, I think people keeping, uh, you know, rare, large, or valuable fish that are prone to be jumpers um, maybe should have some dexamethasone on hand at any given time. It lasts a long time. It's got a long shelf life. It's safe to use, etc. So um, past that, I think um, the second uh, consideration relative to, uh, I say second, let's stop counting, jumpers, is secondary bacterial infections. They will get them. Any fish that jumps out of the tank for any length of the time, to show any kind of body lesion after the fact, anything that, that has lesions the next day is probably, if not definitely, going to get a bacterial infection. The reason being is because stress on the magnitude of tank jumping is enough to shut down the immune system and have created significant lesions in the skin and gills. Yeah, the gills, because chapping occurs. Even if the gills never touch the ground, they did dry. Um, even if not completely, the gill filaments have suffered and they're prone to bacterial infection. So it's not a bad idea if you have access to it, medicated food, um, or if let's say you have a fish that's jumped that is still eating uh, and you can give it medicated food, that's great. If it's not, if it's a carnivore, you can put antibiotics into the bellies of a goldfish. Uh, you can put antibiotics inside a frozen pinky. Whatever it is that you're getting the animal to eat, you can put antibiotics in that and try to get the, the drugs into the fish that way. Or, again, it's, it is not beyond the scope of most hobbyists with a friendly veterinarian to provide them with the medication. 
um, to inject antibiotics into such an animal. Batril or enrofloxacin has a long half-life in fish. You can use it once every two or even three days with good results. Uh, there are other antibiotics like fluorphenicol um, sold under the brand name Nuflor that are also good for injection of, by a variety of means and is relatively low risk. So that is something to consider. Uh, secondary infections after jumpers. One of the things you'll notice most frequently is when the fish jumps out of the tank, you'll see the tail gets smaller and smaller as the tissues um, of the tail that, that were dried and desiccated to like potato chip consistency, um, those tissues basically rot off and that can be reduced by antibiotic therapy. So to recap on a jumpers video, um, the first order of business is get the fish back into the regular water that it came out of. That's, you know, nice, warm, balanced ecosystem water, the main tank. Um, wipe off what you can without destroying the slime coat. Just take off the big stuff. Open the gill covers. That's crucially important. If you want to put an air stone uh, bubbler underneath the fish, that's fine. You don't want it to be boiling because that's stressful, you want it just to be a very gentle drizzle of water movement past the fish. And then really minimal handling. Um, let the fish, uh, see if you can wait, see if the fish will breathe. Uh, gill excursions will occur. If that's the case, then you have a chance. Bend the body very slightly, not into a C shape or anything close to that. Just bend the body a little bit to kind of limber it up. And then, uh, for the most part, leave it alone. People are crazy about the idea of prying the gill covers open or moving the fish in front of the uh, intakes of an um, uh, outlet for positive pressure ventilation. That is not necessary. Um, moving the fish around just a little bit. Everything is done on a gentle basis to minimize further stress. And then, uh, for large and valuable fish, an injection of dexamethasone and finally, antibiotic therapy after the fact for any fish that you can to prevent bacterial infection secondarily. That is how to handle jumpers. If I've forgotten something, which I'm sure I have, please put it in the comments and I will swing back around and uh, add those amendments or do a second supplementary video that's linked to this one. I appreciate your, your patience and time today. Thank you. Just a moment if you don't mind. If using robot people to deliver this video content isn't cool with viewers, please let us know in the comments section, below. Also, please subscribe to this channel to be informed when the video about, what to do when your fish jumps out of the tank, is released. If you click, like, on this video, it ranks higher on YouTube and more people can find it. You have our thanks. I'm just a robot lady. Take care now.